Finally, I am back, and I missed all kinds of stuff. So we're going to just get into it a little bit here, a little bit tomorrow. We're just going to kind of expound upon the things that we were not able to talk about while I was away doing Listapalooza and vacationing and all of that. Michigan almost has completely revamped its coaching staff. We're going to talk about that here today on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Wednesday. We're back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I am your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverine's Wear, through USA Today Sports Media Group, back on the ground, back in Michigan. I did actually get back early this week, but we uh, we took a couple days, the vacation from the vacation, you know what I mean? You ever have that where you're just like moving around a lot, and then you get back and you're more exhausted than you were when you left? That's kind of where I was. Uh, but nonetheless, there, uh, there have been all kinds of reported hires, only one officially announced, uh, in uh, the time frame in which I was gone. Uh, so, uh, obviously, there still has been no announcements about retention when it comes to uh, Ron Bellamy or Mike Hart. But you, again, without any movement, any news or notes saying, okay, there's going to be a new wide receivers coach or a new running backs coach, uh, it appears that everything is uh, continuing on as it is. And so the offense is now set. And it has already obviously been announced that Kirk Campbell is the offensive coordinator and Grant Newsom is the offensive line coach. We have covered that already. Uh, but since Steve Kasula, uh, which we have discussed in a prior episode, but we'll discuss a little bit here, has been added back to the offense, this time as a position coach after being a, a successful offensive analyst, someone who was around in 2021, uh, came along with Josh Gaddis in 2019, did his own thing uh 2022 and 23 by going and being the offensive coordinator of UMass. So he comes aboard as a tight ends coach. He does have that experience in his repertoire. And uh, obviously he gets something of a, uh, just because I rented one, <laughs> he gets a little bit something of a Range Rover in, uh, in Colston Loveland. I think that's, that's more apt. I was going to say Cadillac. I don't like Cadillacs. I, I make that, that thing, but I had a Cadillac and it, it was terrible. So I don't usually like to make that, uh, make that uh, analogy, that comparison. But uh, nonetheless, he gets some uh, gets someone that can can go fast. He can go and you know go up. He can be a race car. He can be a uh, someone who climbs mountains. And we're back to messing with this microphone. <laughs> you know, he can do kind of a little bit of everything, right? He's got the speed. He's got the he's got the agility. He's got the ability to be tough. All that kind of stuff. So he inherits him as well. So that's all good and well. Uh, but let's get into the the biggest of the hires, who was. This is almost a week old now because I believe it was like Thursday that uh, I woke up to this news. Maybe it was Friday. Uh, they're on vacation in sunny central Florida. But uh, Wink Martindale becomes the new defensive coordinator. So we have not covered this. This is why we're doing this now. If you are just tuning in. Uh, it is, to me, a perfect hire. And it's I know there's a lot of people out there that, that are going to kind of downplay him to some degree. It's funny to me, and I was thinking about this as I was getting ready to do the show, that uh, it's, it's the same people who griped about Mike McDonald. No experience. You need the utmost experience. This guy has no experience. And they're bringing Jesse Mendry who has experience. And then they're like, bad experience. Vanderbilt, no good. Maybe he can continue it. But you know he's going to be a step down from Mike McDonald. Then it looks like Michigan's going to hire Joe Cullen, and it's it's bad experience, don't want. And then Wink Martindale, the, the person who oversaw the defense for those years that uh, Mike McDonald and Jesse Minter, everyone's like, they've got to they've be able to do it, but everyone was looking at, as far as the continuity with the scheme, everyone's looking at Zach Orr. He ends up being promoted uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. He's not available, and suddenly... It's like, okay, well, who is there? Joe Cullen comes available and everyone's screeching and saying, no, bad dude, wrong hire, even though he's been sober for 18 years, bad dude. And then suddenly when Wink comes aboard, it's, no, what happened to Joe Cullen? It's just a funny way that the the narratives work within within Michigan fan base, uh, social media at least. Uh, But uh, nonetheless, I think it is absolutely perfect because 
Uh, he's the guy who, what you know, like if, if Jim Harbaugh could have gotten Wink Martindale in 2021, not only would have fans been going absolutely nuts, but I mean, like that would have been the no brainer, right? And I understand there's been some adaptation from Mike McDonald and Jesse Minter. I, I, I'm sure that Wink is going to come with some semblance of I'm Wink Martindale. I'm going to do what I want to do. But at the same time, I, I'm sure he'll look at, you know, okay, this is what the guys know. This is the college. This isn't pros. We're going to do what our guys know, and we'll try to add to that or change that as we see fit. Uh, he's got a really good track record of doing kind of the same thing we saw from each of the last two defensive coordinators of, of Taylor making the defense for the opponent, which is kind of the bigger part of the scheme than anything, right? It isn't just the Don Brown, what you see is what you get. Try to guess where the pressure is coming from. This is try to guess what we're going to do in a lot of ways. And uh, I think that that's, it's, it's absolutely perfect. And I remember talking to Chris Ballas about this. He had come over. Uh, he happened to be here in Fenton town. And I uh, came over for a uh, for a few minutes, and we were and we were sitting there talking about uh, uh, Michigan's job openings at that time because this is what two weeks ago, and we both like this is before Wink became like a serious candidate, and he, you know he's like you know unless Michigan can get Wink Martindale, we just kind of laughed right because it's like that seemed like such an impossibility. That, and I remember even saying that on this show, like, th- you know, three-ish weeks ago. It's like, well, Michigan can go and get Wink Martindale. And it seemed like an impossibility because so entrenched in the NFL, but obviously comes with the recommendation of both Harbaugh's, right? Of John Harbaugh and actually not as much Jim as Jack Harbaugh, who he well, coached under at Western Kentucky. So I think it's an absolutely no-brainer hire. Uh, I think it's absolutely perfect. We're going to get into the recruiting piece because I know there's a bunch of people that are, that are like, well, but he's not going to recruit. He doesn't have the experience to recruit. I'll tell you why that doesn't matter. And it's going to be pretty simple. And then we'll move on to some of the other coaching hires. And we'll see where we go from there. Uh, we try not to spill into tomorrow's show, but first show back, you never know how uh, long-winded or short-winded I will be. Anyway, we're going to do that here in just one moment. But before we do, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's like dipping in your own personal transfer portal and getting the right team members to help your company win its championship. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network like Connor Stallion's vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even have launched a new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I'll tell you what, while I was, you know, waking up every morning in Orlando, uh, went to, Sarah and I went to Disney for based, not even a whole day, totally it spread over two days, three, three parks. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, we, we just did like the, the very basic like Epcot and, uh, animal kingdom. And then, uh, a little nostalgia, two hours at magic kingdom, but every single morning that I woke up. Uh, it was like, okay, something new. And it's like, of course, this is, this is how it goes. Right. So there's just, was a lot happening. So we'll, we'll get to the, uh, the assistance. We'll get to Sean McGee, uh, his return, uh, all kinds of stuff there. I mean, it's just, it's Sheryl Moore has been busy as you can imagine. And uh, again, I don't think it's, I, I think he's doing an absolutely phenomenal job with uh, what the staff looks like. Is it going to get the same type of accolades as Ohio State? No, but at the same time, and it is daunting that Ohio State brings in Chip Kelly. I think that is a much 
scarier hire given what he can do at the offensive coordinator position. I, I understand he's been around for a while and all this stuff, but like that is a much scarier proposition than a Bill O'Brien offense. I think Bill, but the, here's the thing. And this is to the, uh, this is to the Buckeye who decided to, to tweet at me while I was on vacation saying that I said something, which I cl- very much, I was reading the, you know, we did the, uh, the mailbag last week and I read someone else's th- uh, thing is saying it's hilarious about Bill O'Brien. And I, I said, no, I mean, that's, I think he makes them tougher. And I don't know that Chip Kelly does that necessarily, which is kind of what they need. Okay. So, um, they need that, need that toughness. Right. And, uh, it, it might exacerbate, you know, it again, will it help Ohio state contend with Oregon and, uh, some other like flashier programs? Yeah, it might. But when it comes to what Michigan's running, it still might not help them, but we'll see. I mean, I had Michigan losing that game. As of right now, but that's also because Michigan has a lot more uncertainty at the moment. And uh, if Michigan gets by Texas and looks good doing it, maybe everything changes. Um, right. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I just need to see, you know, there's a, you know, Michigan returned its entire offensive line and a quarterback. I mean, I probably would be like, okay, certainly Michigan has a defense. But okay, I digress. The whole kind of point there is. Uh, Michigan, when it hires a lot of the guys that it hires, it's not going to get a lot of accolades, right? Jesse Minter was hired, and it, it didn't get a lot of accolades, right? It, it did in Michigan circles, but out, outside of that, it was pretty much falling on deaf ears. But yet, when Jim Knowles got hired at Ohio State, everyone was fawning and raving over it. Now, Jim Knowles has done a great job against uh, most teams, just not against Michigan, right? If you give up 30 points, chances are you're going to lose in that rivalry game, usually. Right. I mean, obviously it was not the case in 2018. Uh, they gave up 39, but Michigan gave up 62. So it, it kind of is, de- you know, dependent on that. But generally in that rivalry, the race to 30 kind of what, uh, you know, I believe it was Jim Harbaugh that said that. I think that was more in the uh, Alabama game, but nonetheless, it's the same thing with Ohio State. Um, actually, I'm thinking of Dan Campbell, <laughs> Dan Campbell in the San Francisco 49ers game. Um, nonetheless, they're not, everything's going to be met with accolades, but I think they're making smart hires, uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And so one of the gripes when it comes to Wink Martindale that people have is, is he going to be much of a recruiter because he hasn't been doing it for 21 years. And he just doesn't seem like a guy that's going to fly around and be sitting in people's living rooms and be an avid recruiter. Well, I am going to tell you why it doesn't matter. Uh, according to the strategy Michigan's deployed. Now, you do need all hands on deck in recruiting, which does mean more so that they, when recruits come to Ann Arbor, that he can sit people down, show them his plan, show them how they fit, and build a bond that way. But is Wink Martindale going to be flying all over the place? I don't think so. But neither were Jesse Minter nor Mike McDonald. They were not like these crazy, amazing, avid recruiters from the defensive coordinator position, nor was Don Brown. Michigan hasn't really had that from... Either the head coach, I mean, yes, Jim Harbaugh traveled. Yes, some of the other guys traveled. And Wink Martindale certainly will get on the road. But it is um, it, it is more of going to be up to the position uh, guys, which I think works more because Wink Martindale, in a way, is kind of, I feel, a rental. Like, he's not going to retire in Ann Arbor, almost certainly. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't matter as much. Michigan has not really had that. Now, as long as, long as most of the rest of the hands are on deck, then fine. It's okay. But this is kind of status quo to some degree uh, because he, he'll, he'll still have to do some recruiting, but it's not necessarily going to be uh, as uh, ferocious of an effort as even, say, Sharon Moore will be in doing this, I would imagine. But then again, I could be wrong. Maybe Sharon sat winked down and said, we want to bring you to Michigan. And also, if you do come here, you're going to have to recruit your tail off. And that might be one of the conditions. We'll see. Uh, but certainly he feels comfortable enough because he's going to have to do it. But if you look at his predecessors, uh, Jesse Minter being looked at by many as maybe the best defensive coordinator Michigan has ever had. And they, and they look at it and they say, okay, well, he's replacing him. I mean, you can kind of look at it and say, well, Wink Martindale, is, he's seen a lot of football. He knows the scheme. The scheme is based off of the scheme he ran in the NFL. And uh, he'll have the talent to be able to do it, right? This isn't like 
I, I understand there are moments with the Giants where it didn't look as good as it did with the Ravens, right? But the difference is, is there's a lot more parity in the NFL. And it's when you come to the college level, it's there's a lot less parity, right? Well, you know, you might you, you might have in this this year, for instance, Michigan probably has what four games, maybe three games in which it's uh, theoretically going to be on even kind of playing field. And that's, you know, Texas, Oregon and Ohio State. So uh, things kind of uh, can be different depending on the game. Right. And then it's about coming up with really great game plans to confuse the quarterback. And again, they've got the, the personnel to do it. So he obviously has got some uh, different pieces that he will be working with behind the scenes. I want to get to the latest hire that was uh, that revealed today before we get to the others. And that's uh, Stephen Adagoke, who is a dude. Uh, great personality. Um, I, I will tell you that he and I were marveling <laughs> at some rivalry fodder. Even after he left, I think after he went to the 49ers as a quality control assistant, uh, just marveling at some of the, uh, the rivalry fodder that was out there. Um, but he, he's someone who has the familiarity with the system, right? He was a, a defensive backs coach uh, under Steve Klinkscale in 2021. Uh, I believe he was around the program. I saw some things that said 19 and 20. I only remember him 20 and 21. I don't remember seeing him on the field in 2019, but again, that seems like a lifetime ago. So uh, I don't really remember, uh, but he is, uh, Coming off of a one-year stint as the safeties coach with the Houston Texans, Houston took a big step forward in its secondary. It was like I'm looking at different rankings. I didn't look at one cer certain service, but they went from being like 28th to like 16th in the country uh, in the, their secondary rankings. And obviously, uh, it, that's a collective effort, cornerbacks, safeties. And uh, right now, it, it's unclear if he's going to be cornerbacks and safeties or if he's just going to be safeties. But he's a former safety from that who played at Mississippi State, has familiarity with what Michigan is, has familiarity with the scheme is, and uh, obviously has an NFL pedigree, and he's a really young dude. I love everything about it. Um, that's the type of guy you want to hire, is that young up-and-comer who can make that type of impact. And he is the type of guy that's going to make a big impact recruiting. He already was a big impact guy recruiting-wise uh, before. So I'm excited to see what happens with him and uh, that position. Let's get into the other positions on the tail end uh, because we still have to talk about Greg Scruggs and uh, who, again, has not been officially announced. And then the rumored linebackers coach. Uh, we'll get to that here in just one moment. But before we do get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, that's America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. And let me tell you, that is a, that is a joy to use. It's, uh, I, I did the same thing. I had a blast uh, using all of my $150. Did I make some good decisions? I did not. Uh, I, well, actually, I did. It's just that I missed by the narrowest of margins on multiple huge parlays. But I, I love doing the, the $5 to win 2000 type bets. That's just where, where, how I roll. But that's 150 bucks if your bet wins. So go in and, and, and make a smarter decision than I do. You can bet on all of your favorite NBA players and college players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and a heck of a lot more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Fanduel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, Thursday show, we're going to get into the NIL partnership uh, that uh, was revealed today, as announced today. Uh, I was on the exclusive Zoom call that where they discussed it. Uh, afterwards, we got to talk to Ward Manuel for a little bit, and some more things came out about different things. We'll get into some of the, all of that, um, and we'll, maybe, we'll do a little bit of basketball talk. Not a lot. We don't want to. That, that's more of like like latter half of segment three basketball if we have to you know if we have to that's talk about it it's going to be relegated to the tail end uh, but we'll get to all of that so let's continue on with these staff changes so obviously since i uh was out on vacation steve Klinkscale and mike elston both departed and that is uh beyond disappointing um it seemed as if both were staying and then uh and even in steve Klinkscale's uh case he 
told everyone he was staying only to uh, have things change, right? I see a lot of the, like, again, I have not had my ear to the ground. I'm not going to pretend to be an insider with any of these coaching hires, right? There are things that, things that I dig on. There are thing, people I talk to on certain things. I have not done so. I've talked to colleagues um, mostly. Uh, I have talked to some people who would know, but I haven't really dug on it because it's just not something that uh, I want to do particularly. Right. I'm not trying to be your overall insider. And there are certain things in which I will, obviously, like the Connor Stallion stuff was, I was all over that. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there are certain elements that I can bring you some inside info and insight that was just not going to be one of them. So, uh, relied on some, uh, kind of discussions with colleagues and everything. So it, I know a lot of people like to dump on some of those guys and say like, Hey, you were wrong. Well, it, the things changed, right? It's like recruiting, you know, it's, it's not all, it's always a fluid situation and it's not always like there's okay. You know, things are what they are and it doesn't change. It's static and it never will change. Things have changed, right? So, um, ease up on some of them a bit. If you are uh, going nuts on some of the insiders out there saying like, Hey, you said this and this isn't what happened. Well, that's because that's what was happening. And then things changed. Uh, but it, those are, those are big losses, but you know, I think that, uh, th there's a, a lot of potential here and now you've got Greg Scruggs, who is another NFL guy who spent the last year at Wisconsin, worked his way up under Luke Fickle, uh, who, uh, was a director of player personnel at, uh, at Cincinnati was a defensive line coach in the tenure in which, uh, they, uh, came really close to, to beating Georgia in the, in a. Uh, New Year's six game, and then went to the college football playoff the next year. Uh, had pretty good defensive lines those years. So um, then he ended up moving on and being a uh, an assistant uh, line coach with the Jets for two years before going to Wisconsin. And then uh, shows his disloyalty to uh, Luke Fickle by going to Michigan. Um, but again, a young guy who's going to be an avid recruiter. He's going to have a lot more resources. He's going to connect really well with people. And it does, it is a shame considering Elston kind of felt like the, the man who, after all of these years of different defensive line coaches and not necessarily all of them, any of them uh, really stunning you with their capabilities, right? They had good ones. I'm not saying they didn't have good ones, obviously. Like Sean Nua is a good defensive line coach, but Elston took things to another level. Weirdly, I'm having a hard time remembering who the, uh, oh yeah, it was Greg Madison. I mean, even Greg Madison couldn't get quite out of some of these guys what I think Mike Elston would have gotten out of them. So that's it's a big loss. But NFL, he doesn't have to, he has got young kids, doesn't have to worry about recruiting, can make more money doing less work ultimately at a more prestigious position. So it is a shame, but that is the the reality of it. Uh so it's good to get a young hungry guy like Greg Scruggs, right? Um you're going to in a normal world, especially in today's college football, you're going to lose guys to the NFL. Uh, and what in what you what you want is to get young guys like like uh kind of like you just took Adegoke from the NFL. But you want a young guy like him. You want a young guy like Greg Scruggs who are gonna kind of grind and hope that they move into uh, a higher position either at the college level or in the NFL. Right? Like so Adegoke is might be a little bit of a different thing, taking a making a move from position coach to potentially the same position coach. Uh, in, in the college level, but it's a place we're familiar with. But Greg Scruggs, I really like it. Um, I think that that's, that's a, a great move. Uh, Sean McGee comes back as the new uh, position of general manager. Uh, it's a position that didn't exist. Um, as, why did he leave Michigan in the first place? Well, there was a, uh, I, I do know the, the situation. I won't, I know it, it drives people crazy, but again, this is not something that I was told like, hey, you can go tell everybody this. Uh, when someone tells you just for, for the people who, who complain that I do this, when people tell you things, sometimes it's for your information only, not for you to go and tell everybody, but let's just say it was an amicable split, kind of like, a I don't want to say a philosophical butting of heads, but it could, but like, uh, in, in a way it was. And so he ended up going to the NFL and, and Michigan went a different direction. Uh, I love Sean McGee. I've had a great relationship with him for years. 
and uh, there's he commands a lot of respect, and he really knows his ball. A uh, meticulous guy who came from the military originally, and the Navy and everything. He's the reason I still re- root for Navy. Uh, sorry to Connor Stallions that he is not the reason, because <laughs> uh, I think I knew Sean McGee better uh, earlier, uh, so uh, and had those conversations about the uh, about the Navy. But um, it's uh, he's just he's a good dude. He's really down to earth. Connects well with people, uh, but has his eye on the prize and knows exactly what needs to happen on any, you know, in any given situation. And that's exactly the type of person that uh, Sharon Moore needs. And considering the reports that he was uh, on his way to Oklahoma for the same role and Michigan was able to steal him back. I mean, that's huge. So that is, that is big. So they're rounding out the staff. They're getting uh, all kinds of guys uh, here involved. And I like the look of it. And it's not surprising to see that, you know, like, ESPN, FB, not FBI, SP Plus has Michigan as the number five team in the country at the moment. I mean, right now. And uh, that doesn't surprise me, even though there's a million questions with this team at the moment. I wouldn't be that bold. You know, you look at uh, 24-7 sports has their two early top 25. Michigan's number seven. ESPN has theirs and Michigan's, I think, 13th. So it's people are still really high on Michigan. And uh, I think that there's a reason, and it's because I think the most important thing with all of these guys, culture is still going to lead the way. And if the departing captains instilled in the next group of, of people who are going to be captains, and if Jim Harbaugh installed everything he needed in Sharon Moore, then uh, I think then ultimately Michigan's going to be in a good spot, right? I know change can be scary, uh, but it doesn't have to be Rich Rod. And as, uh, even though this continuity hire hasn't brought as much continuity as you would, would think, it's still got a ton of continuity in a, in a lot of the best ways. And even though there are new names, they're the types of names that you, that you hope. Michigan bringing in Wink Martindale, even if he fell out of the NFL, right, resigns from New York because they're uh, getting rid of his buddies, uh, it, that, that's falling upward in a way for Michigan. So that's great news because now you're not just – promoting some people as much as I like Elston and I like uh, clink scale. Uh, I've gotten mixed reviews about the idea of either of them being a defensive coordinator, let alone a co-defensive coordinator situation uh, for, for Michigan. Now you've got a guy, you know, can call a defense and you know, uh, can diagnose what he sees when he looks down on film and when he looks out at everything else and you feel good about all of those other positions, or at least you should. I like it. I like where they're at. So, that's that. All right, we're going to get into uh, the NIL stuff uh, Thursday, and we're going to continue on with uh, just a, lot, a couple other things that we missed. There's not a ton, but there's, there's other things that we did miss, and we will get to some of those things uh, as the week goes by. We're going to play catch up this week. And uh, as always, the, the noble goal is to go four this week by having a Saturday episode. That's probably more likely uh, this week because we got the Michigan State game in basketball on Saturday. So Saturday is a more uh, normal work day for me, especially since I took uh, yesterday close to off. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will be back soon. Peace.